Okay, let's move on and talk about the general options within the software. The general options box allows you to globally change many settings uh, for the software, folks. When you make a change in the general options box, it will keep the settings as now your default settings every time you open the software. Uh, in the general options box, you can make changes to the working environment, stitch trim options, grid settings, digitizing modes, uh, etc. First of all, to access the general General options box. Simply select tools from the menu bar. Next simply come down to the bottom and select general options. Now the first tabs and the tabs available under the general options box you'll see environment, machine grid, digitizing, drawing, and auto base. Let's go ahead and uh, um, discuss each one of these. First of all the environment. In this section you can change the unit of measures, uh, select your default fabric settings, select the default thread chart, and select your auto match thread colors when loading a design. So your units here, metric, you can simply toggle over to inches and metric. That's a wonderful feature and a lot of uh, digitizing software that's out there to go from metric to inches can be a nightmare. Uh, I will be teaching you all how I work metrically and I work metrically in embroidery. Embroidery is based on the metric measurement system. It simplifies the process. Certainly when I'm teaching you my measurement theory, it simplifies it a great deal, but I think in inches. So when we developed the software, I very much wanted the ability to go from inches to metric very very quickly it can be done here in the general options box there's a simpler way I'll show you that a little later uh, you have your default style this is for your material uh, look uh, this is kind of neat now when you go through save to sew process and as I define that you'll see that at that point you can select uh, all of the different materials that you could possibly be working on but in the default style here under options let's say that you're working on knit goods you know you're stitching on a, a knit t-shirt right from the beginning you can come down here and select a uh, um your piquet knit or, or the knit style that you want to work on, just a knit t-shirt, uh, and it will default to the proper densities, underlay, and pull compensations. So I even before you process through the save to sew feature, which is indeed one of the highlights of Floriani software, you can give a default style of material uh, based on the type of work that you typically do. All right. You then have your default thread chart. Now, certainly, the default thread chart is going to power up with Floriani, and we'll talk more about the, the the thread chart in a little while, but you'll also see that if you're not using Floriani thread, you're using Madeira, Robus, and Anton, any one of the other major threads in the industry, you have the ability to set as a default that color chart um, working with the uh, working with your designs and then your auto match thread colors upon loading quite simply when you bring it in and it sees the colors of the design down here in the color box it will bring it up and it will uh, auto thread match the color to the closest colors within any given default thread chart you next have your machine tab uh, your machine tab and in this section you can choose to activate trims if a stitch is longer than a specified number you can split up your jumps longer than a specified number remove Move stitches that are shorter than a specified number, combine jumps when reading a design, and select the default frame out location. So all those settings are right here. You can activate your trims if longer than a certain stitch length. You can split up stitches. Again, a wonderful level of control that you can all preset. And remember, these are default settings. So this is where you can kind of come in and, and, and set your own recipes prior to digitizing. It will hold these settings, and that is a very, very wonderful feature. It always seemed to me on a lot of software, I was always going in and setting my own defaults uh, every time I opened up the blessed software. Now you have the ability to set it, and it will hold it within the system. The next tab is your grid tab. Uh, in this section, you can set the parameters of the grid by selecting uh, and specifying uh, for both the horizontal and vertical. You can check to maintain the aspect ratio so the horizontal and vertical settings will be equal. You can select to have objects you move to snap to the grid for lining objects up. Uh, finally, you can uh, choose to display the grid as lines or dots. Uh, the grid is a very, very important aspect uh, to digitizing and follow some of the rules. It, it can be uh, a wonderful frame of reference. So while I use it for alignment, I also use the grid uh, settings as the default for the minimum widths of things like satin stitches and such, so it can be very, very wonderful. I will just tell you, it defaults to 10. In, uh, in my opinion, when I digitize, I set my grid to 1.5 millimeters, both horizontal and vertical, 
and then I normally will select maintain your aspect ratio so it will always have it uh, equal on both sides I choose to set the grid as lines it's a personal choice next is your digitizing tab uh, the digitizing tab you're able to select the type of input you want to use while digitizing simple draw bezier freehand in this section you can also select the digitizing mode you want to use standard and advanced for both complex fills and satin stitches uh, with complex fills you can even select the default stitch angle you want to use we're going to go much more into standard and 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 advanced levels of both complex fill and satin stitches as we progress through my lessons uh, I choose or lots of times I work within standard a uh, standard is simply just less input the software defines or will pick uh, start point end points uh, and angles uh, when you're in example in satin stitch mode in advance uh, you are uh, number one defining the outline of the structure then defining your angle lines within the satin stitching then defining start point end points uh, it's, it's just more input as you digitize so depending upon the design uh, I choose many times to work with the standard values because the editing is so savvy. Moving start point end points is so quick. So I generate stitches very quickly in the standard mode. I then start in, or move start points, move end points, change some angles and such. Um, it, it, it's your choice. Uh, I will define for you very clearly the differential between standard and advanced in both stitch types as we progress through the videos. Uh, next is your drawing tab. Uh, your drawing tab, and very simply in this section, you're able to choose the color of design element will display when you select the software. So uh, when you select, you have the choice of all these different colors. You can select other and, and select any other color. Uh, this is just when I select an element on the design, it's what the selection color is. Uh, I leave it on blue. Normally I digitize on a white or a gray background. The choice is absolutely yours. And the final tab is the auto base. In this section, you you're able to change the auto base, uh, um, the auto base settings within it. Uh, so I'll click on auto base. Uh, you can add crosshairs to your base. Uh, you can do a stitch length for a base and, and, and vary it from one to a hundred millimeters. Uh, you can base pass your outer edge and actually set the distance. Um, the distance that you want the base stitch to be around any given design that you have on the screen. Uh, the base feature is a brand new feature in the software. I'm very, very excited about that. I will use that, utilize that lots of times as I digitize and as I run my embroidery designs. That's the options tab. Let's go ahead and continue on.